Train Journey by Judith Wright. In the poem Train Journey, the themes of Australian landscape and environment are portrayed with the use of personification and apostrophe to instill a sense of life in the landscape. This is displayed throughout the poem, where observations of Australian landscapes are seen from the position of the train. Judith Wright was an Australian poet. She was a recipient of the Christopher Burnham Award and also the Australian National Living Treasure Award in 1998. Her work is noted for a keen focus on the Australian environment, which began to gain prominence in Australian art in the years following World War II. Her aesthetic centers on the relationship between mankind and the environment, which she views as the catalyst for poetic creation. Her famous works are Women to Man, The Gateway, The Two Fires, Birds, The Other Half, etc. Now we can go through the poem. Glassed with cold sleep and dazzled by the moon, out of the confused hammering dark of the train. In the first stanza, the poet says that she woke up at night like a half dream. I saw the Australian landscapes which are seen from the position of the train. The phrase, glassed with cold sleep, is symbolic of her disconnection with nature, as it shows that there is a barrier which prevents her from enjoying the landscape. Here, in this stanza, we could see another personification, out of the confused hammering dark of the train. It highlights her difficulty of staying awake, proving that the majority of the poem is a dream. I looked and saw under the moon's cold sheet your delicate dry breast, country that built my heart. The personification with your delicate dry breast, country that built my heart, reveals the identity-shaping influence of the landscape. When the persona recognizes, here the persona is the speaker itself, the writer itself. She is the persona here, Judith Wright. So when the persona recognizes not only the beauty of her lands, but also her deep concern for nature's suffering, the use of alliteration and personification of the hills being described as dry, suggests that the hills have no nutrients left in them to provide life for the soil. These techniques highlight her true love for nature and her country. And the small trees on their uncolored slope, like poetry mood, articulate and sharp, and purposeful under the great dry flight of air, under the crosswise currents of wind and star. Here, I could see small trees on the slope which are uncolored because it is night and it is dark. Here, similarly, like poetry mood, articulate and sharp, which means the small trees on their uncolored slope move like a poem, which gives a sense of rhythm to the poem and creates a vivid image. The nature speaks clearly and sharply even in the adverse condition. Here the adverse condition is the crosswise currents of wind and the great dry flight of air. What make this adverse condition? Here train symbolizes the physical barriers which separate society from the authenticity of the physical landscape. Individuals perception of nature has been altered as a result of the change in their context, where many individuals switch their values from beauties of nature to other aspects. So that's why the nature gives us warnings. Warnings in the sense through natural calamities, flood, cyclones, etc. Here we could see Judith Wright's deep concern for nature's suffering. 
Next lines. Clunch down your strength, box tree and iron bark. Break with your violent rule, the virgin rock. Draw from the flying dark its breath of dew, till the unliving come to life in you. So, now it is the time to show your strength. The poet is urging the box tree and iron bark to break the powerful rocks with their roots. Here, the writer is encouraging the nature to respond. Actually, we the human beings are colonizing the nature. These human beings are plundering, destroying and disrupting the nature's natural system. Now the day has approached. Nature has decided to respond back. Go through the lines. Till the unliving come to life in you. That means it brings life to things that don't have a sense of life in them. With Wright's use of imagination, she adds a sense of life into the environment. She knows that one day nature will choose to stop providing and it will only determine the users, not the land itself. Because the nature knows how to regrow. Because it has the power to regrow. So it's a final warning for the human beings. Coming to the final lines. Be over the blind rock, a skin of sense, under the barren hide, a slender dance. I walk and saw the dark small trees that burn, suddenly into flowers more lovely than the white moon. Here, right paints her message in her palms through powerful descriptions. Under the barren hide, a slender dance. This line from Train Journey is an example of this strong image of the tree's branches dancing in the wind. However, slender has a double meaning. Wright exposes the tree's chances of survival in this landscape as slender if their desire to live is not urgent enough. In the final stanza, the metaphor I walk and saw the dark small trees that burn suddenly into flowers, more lovely than the white moon. It creates a vivid image of positivity. In this stanza, the way that the environment is addressed is also changed. Today, we have studied a beautiful poem, Train Journey by Judith Wright. Train Journey achieves a balance between language and and the imagination of concepts with her use of themes and techniques. She creates a sense of life in the landscapes and adds beauty to it, which heightens its importance. Thank you.